I have 10 super useful tips for you about light and shadow, but before we get to that, there's a quiz. So get ready. As the planes of the mug turn away from the light, a form shadow is created. The mug is also blocking light from hitting the table here, so that's a cast shadow. So form shadows are where the form turns away from the light, cast shadows are when one thing blocks light hitting another thing. So look at where the green arrow is pointing. What's happening with the shadow in that spot? Is it a form or cast shadow? And how about the orange arrow? Is it pointing at a bit of form shadow or cast shadow? So this was a form shadow created as the thigh turned away from the light, but this was a cast shadow. It was created by the torso blocking the light from hitting here. Sometimes the shadow shapes are gonna be really strong at the edge, and that's the core shadow. So from there, it might get a bit weaker, or in other words, it's gonna get lighter away from the core shadow on the edge. The reason that it weakens down here is the reflected light from the table. You wouldn't have thought that reflected light would do much to a shadow, but it really can. So my first question is, what's happened to the core shadow on this orange here, and why has that happened? So what's happened is that the black hoodie reflects less light than the table did, and so there's less reflected light on the bottom of the orange, and the shadow appears more even. You don't have the core shadow and then the bounce light part of the shadow. It's just a more even shadow. So now you know why there's a ton of reflected light and quite clear core shadows in this reference image. It's because of the white sheet reflecting a lot of light back up into the shadows. Here's a little home experiment. Hold up your arm to the light so that one side gets a form shadow, then bring up your other palm into the light under your arm. See the light reflect off your palm back into the shadow under your arm. So occlusion shadows. In some parts of the figure, the little nooks and crannies, there's no direct light, but there's also none of that reflected light or bounce light so it gets particularly dark in those little nooks and crannies, and that's gonna be the occlusion shadows. When I look around the room, I can see occlusion shadows between the couch cushions. You know, it gets really dark in there uh, between the drawers and the front of the frame of the drawers or whatever that is. If you look around your room, can you see occlusion shadows? Okay, cast shadows. Cast shadows tend to be darkest near the casting object. So as you get further from the thing that's casting the shadow, in this case, the hand, the shadow is gonna get a bit lighter. So my question to you is why is that? But the reason is that because near the object, it's hard for the bounce light to get in here, but further away, there's more space, there's more scope for the bounce light to get into the shadow so it tends to lighten up. And my final question to you in this quiz is what's wrong with the shading in this drawing? So direct light is gonna travel in straight lines. So if the light hits here, it won't also be able to hit here. You might get some bounce light in here, but the direct light is the thing that's really clear cut. That creates the light areas. It's gonna hit or it's not gonna hit. You're gonna to wanna to clarify what's facing the right way to get that direct light, to get those direct light beams. And I really often see people shading one area that implies the light is coming from one direction, but then other areas don't make sense with that. My name's Kenzo, this is Love Life Drawing, and this is the final video in our February 2021 series. February is the 28 day challenge where you can draw beautiful Crocky Cafe reference images every day of the month while applying the things that you learn in this lesson series. So those were some simple principles about light and shadow, and now here's 10 tips for you about shading in your drawings. People's eyes know a lot more than their brains do about how things look. And what I mean is, most people can see that this hand is kind of weird looking, but they wouldn't be sure exactly why. Their eyes just know that there's something weird about this hand. Even if the person's never learned that the finger structure should start fanning out from the wrist, and so there should be gaps between the fingers at the base of the fingers. So by the time you get to the base of the fingers, there's a little bit of space between the fingers. 
everyone's eyes are really experienced. So everyone's eyes have seen anatomy and perspective and all of these things every day, all day for years. So that's one reason that drawing is really hard. Everyone's eyes, including our own, are experts at all this stuff and are gonna be able to pick up on all these little problems. But the cool thing is that you can turn that to your advantage. So you can bring out these things that people's eyes know, but that their brains don't really know in your drawings. If you bring out those simple principles of light and shadow that we looked at earlier, the drawings are gonna look pretty cool. So for example, the core shadow thing, that's a really cool thing and it's a real thing. People's eyes have seen it. So you can really lean into it and exaggerate it and people's eyes are gonna love it, but they won't know why and that makes it even cooler. Just by the way, the emphasis on core shadows is just one example. It's not necessary, you don't have to do it. It's a stylistic choice. So Chris Glib doesn't really use core shadows that way, but his pen drawings with simple hatching are really awesome and interesting. Okay, so what's the easiest, clearest thing that you can draw that feels 3D? A box, it's literally just three dimensions. Look at this drawing I did as a beginner. There's lots of shading which should make it feel like it has form, like it's 3D, but it doesn't, it feels kind of flat. I was so caught up in the little details that it ends up feeling that way. If you drew a box like this with all these little bits all over it, it would kind of feel flat too. The shading is also inconsistent. There's a shadow here and here, so it's not really clear where the lighting's coming from. If we just redid the shadows in a really crude way, just six straight lines like this, uh, and make let's make one side dark and the other side light and see what happens. Well, it's pretty crude, but at least it's a lot clearer. And now it has some dimension to it and it has a clarity about the lighting on it because it's focused on the big simple planes. So what often happens is you get bamboozled by the simultaneous contrast optical illusion and forget the big picture. So I have a video about the simultaneous contrast illusion linked below, but basically you see that this bit is a bit lighter than this bit, and then you make it way lighter in the drawing. And then you see that this bit is a little bit darker than the stuff around it, so you make it really dark in the drawing. In reality, this is a little bit darker than the rest of the light areas, but it's still much lighter overall than even the light bit in the shadows. So keeping the light areas light, keeping the dark areas dark. You might have heard that before, but it's worth repeating. And within the light areas, you can gently show more forms with subtle value changes without getting near the darkness of the shadow areas. So once your shadow shapes have done the simple job of explaining the big planes, you can add a little bit more nuance to them. So you can vary the edge to help explain, you know, this is the chest, this is the stomach, um, and so on. So you let the edge move across each form. So on the breast, it's like a simple C-shaped curve. On the tummy, it's a simple curve. But it does get interrupted as it goes from one form to the other. So when it's transitioning, you know, from the shoulder to the breast, for example, it's gonna jump, it's gonna suddenly change direction, but along the actual form, like on the breast itself, it's gonna stay really simple. If it was complicated within each form, so if the curves were quite complicated within the tummy and within the breast and within the shoulder, we wouldn't be able to see what the big forms are, they're really important forms. On the other hand, if it didn't suddenly shift as it went from one form to another, if it was all just really smoothed out, you know, from the shoulder to the breast to the tummy all the way down, it would be like the torso was just one big sort of amorphous blob without structure and forms to it. So it's kind of a balance there. Notice earlier I said that you can bring out more variation in the tones in the light areas, but I didn't mention the dark areas. A lot of artists subtly indicate more forms with subtle variations in value in the light areas, but don't do that so much in the dark areas. They let the information get lost in the dark areas. Um, and that brings me to my next point. Don't let the shading itself distract from the shape of the shadow. So the insides of the shadow shapes can often just be kind of a flat tone or at most maybe a sort of gentle gradient 
like letting it fade as the planes recede away from you. I often see people with shading that attracts a lot of attention without justifying that attention. So in this drawing I did as a beginner, you can see there's lots of different directions to the marks, lots of contrast inside the shadow. There's a lot of texture there and it doesn't really deserve it. It's just kind of chaos and random and it doesn't deserve all that visual attention. You can use very simple outlines for things that you really need to explain inside the shadow shapes or maybe those occlusion shadows we talked about, the really dark bits, you can bring them out a little bit just to explain a little bit of the structure when you really need to. Sometimes you get more complicated lighting setups with two or more light sources. So here she has one light source from over here and another one over here. If you have a lot of time for your drawing, you can do lots of rendering and make the two light sources really clear. But in a quicker drawing, it's gonna be hard to really clarify it and make the lighting make sense. So I think just pick one main light source and then just create shadow shapes based on that light source and kind of ignore the other light source. This figuary session is cool because it has a variety of lighting setups for the same pose. So you're gonna be able to practice all these skills and see how the lighting changes the shadows that you see. When you see a cast shadow that nicely wraps around the form, like this one around the thigh, really use it to explain the form. It's a really nice excuse to put in some cross contour lines and it clarify that foreshortened thigh in this example. So the final tip, the 10th one, is to build solid foundations. And what I mean is, most people have thought more about what goes on the walls in their house or their flat than the actual structure of the building and the foundations and things like that. But if something went wrong with the foundations or the structure and the roof fell on your head, you wouldn't care about your sofa cushions or what you put on the wall. The structure ultimately is more important, even if it doesn't get as much attention, you know, and it's the same in drawings. If you don't have a good foundation, a good structure to your drawing, it doesn't matter how nicely it's shaded and sort of decorated with core shadows and stuff, none of it is gonna work unless you have a really good solid foundation and structure. And that is why this lesson is the last one because all the stuff that we've been learning in the previous ones in many ways is more important. So the skills that you built up in, for example, that block in exercise, you need to have those things really solid before you really wanna start worrying about, you know, your awesome, uh, core shadows or, or whatever you want to do. So that was the last lesson for February 2021. That doesn't mean the challenge is over. You have to do the most important part, which is keep drawing your daily figurary poses and try to keep that drawing habit going after the challenge is over. Don't stop just because figurary ends. Uh, I want to say thanks to Crocky Cafe for providing beautiful references, Scott Breton and Vinilus, aka Andy, um, and all the people that came on our live sessions. Thanks to you guys for making this so much fun uh, and good luck with your practice and I'll see you in the next video.